What's up, everybody? Well, today we are going to be doing episode two of Best Shape of My Life with Will Smith. Um, now, I hadn't originally planned on covering this tonight. I mean, for full disclosure here again, I accidentally filmed episode three before episode two. You'll you'll know when you reach episode three. So just stay tuned, you know, get to it when you get to it. But uh, nonetheless, I'm filming this sort of out of order. So I was not intending on doing this tonight. It's Friday night. I was just going to chill. And uh, I actually planned on watching the live action Cowboy Bebop. But... um. That didn't exactly go as planned. So, uh... Yeah, we're here doing this now. So, let's get right into it, shall we? My father was my hero. His name was Willard Carroll Smith, but we all called him Daddy-O. He demanded rigid perfection from himself and the people around him. When I was 11 years old, he decided he wanted a new wall on the front of his shop. He thought it would be a good project for my younger brother, Harry, and me. Every day for nearly a year, my brother and I would go to my father's shop after school to work on that wall. There were so many times I remember looking at that hole totally discouraged. But Daddy-O wouldn't let us stop. Stop thinking about the damn wall, he said. Your job is to lay this brick perfectly, then move on to the next brick. Don't be worrying about no wall. Your only concern is one brick. Don't worry about building no wall. Just lay one perfect brick today. Yeah, I'm already going to go ahead and stop right there. I'm not a psychologist. Just going to say that right off the cuff because uh, I feel like it's worth mentioning. But the the energy I'm getting here from the way he's talking about his father, it sounds like there's some unresolved issues there. I'm not saying he had a bad relationship with his father. I don't really know. But the fact that his father, as he said himself, demanded a rigid perfection from himself and those around him Perfection is impossible. Anybody willing to be a realist about this, that concept will tell you that perfection is impossible. Um, and in so doing, we put ourselves under a great deal of pressure when we try to pursue per perfection. Um, so if this was the kind of pressure he was raised under, I can't imagine this is going to result in a lot of things that will be all around positive without any drawbacks. So basically what I'm saying here is there's, it sounds like this is going to lead to some negative patterns of behavior, negative actions, and you know, some less than stellar approaches to certain scenarios. Um, or at least le less than stellar reactions to them. Because again, if you're pursuing perfection, you, pre you perform an action and you don't achieve perfection, there's going to be a lot of, you know, negative emotions that get drawn up. Maybe about oneself, maybe about your approach, maybe about your, you know, how you executed. Um, but the reality of the situation is a perfect approach is nigh impossible. That's just what it is. So, starting off strong, to say the least, so. Thank <laughs> you. 
Will really derives a sense of self from always succeeding and being well liked. The need to feel like I'm going to be loved, I'm going to win. And for Will, this is his drug. But unfortunately, as with any addiction, it can kind of get a little out of control. Come on, Will. Get your head back. Ugh, this little ass weight that you can't lift. Ugh. My father was military. He was Air Force. I grew up with the double-edged gift of discipline. You know, that was the hardest day so far. I slept perfectly, just woke up uh, really depleted. It was military motivation in my house. You get that flag to the top of that hill. And his other favorite thing was, when I send you on a mission, there's two possibilities. One, you complete the mission. Or two, you're dead. Again, not a psychologist, but there's two possibilities. You succeed or you're dead. How you, you can't tell that to a child and not expect that to mess with them psychologically down the road. I mean, obviously, give it can possibly give them a significant quantity of drive to accomplish a goal. Will Smith's a very good example of this. But I can't imagine there's no drawbacks. I can't imagine raising a child with that mentality and that mantra verbally spouted to them and it not having some kind of a drawback. He even acknowledges it himself is a double-edged sword. Okay, I want to see how this plays out. I'm exhausted. I got nothing. Yeah, shoulders back. Seven. That's good. That's enough. Yeah, we we all didn't turn up for the session today. Like, oh, it always bums me out when um when we miss a session. Yeah, consistency is key. So you know, it would be great to have him here. But uh, yeah, he's not. Yeah, he didn't, didn't turn up for this one. How are you feeling this morning, Will? Low energy. You weren't happy with the result last week because your weight was up? No, I was happy. I was happy. You were okay? But I did wasn't. you react to it in terms of the amount of food that you ate this week? Yeah, see, that's... No, uh... no, <laughs> no. Yeah, you did. I didn't, I didn't. You did. I didn't. Okay. Are we... Is this an honest show, or are we gonna? Yeah, let's 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 <laughs> let's shoot for honesty. Let's like... Shoot for honesty. <laughs> but I, de I had two days worth of reaction. Um, what did you do? Oh, just like five hundred calories in the day. Eggs, egg, boiled eggs, raw vegetables. That's it. The whole day. The whole day. And I was doing like fourteen hours of fast. I would go. I was like, what I just say. What I just say, we're looking at the cutting edge of this particular sword coming back at him. 14, 14 hours of fasting and nothing but raw vegetables and boiled eggs. Nah, nah, dog. That's none of that is what one would typically consider to be, to be healthy eating. That's he. He, the the rebound of him not meeting his goals caused him to make some aggressive nutritional decisions where he restricted himself heavily. Now, I'm not going to say Will Smith has an eating disorder, but I'm definitely not going to say that this doesn't have some very strong characteristics of disordered eating. So you do what you want with that information. Point is... It is not only incredible that we're getting to see this from such a high-level Hollywood celebrity, but also just so honestly approached. I don't, the way he's saying it, I'm not entirely sure if he feels like he did anything wrong here. I'm wondering, I'm wondering why he feels so comfortable saying, he just seems like it's whatever. It's just like, yeah, I just did this. He obviously on some level knows that it's not the approach he should be taking. Otherwise, he wouldn't have sort of evaded it and tried not to even say it. But 
Maybe there's more to this. Let's see. Like stop eating, you know, right? So I know that worked before, you know. What do you mean when you say fasting worked before? Um. Hey guys, sorry, we uh, have to change cards. Yep. <clears throat> <laughs> Is that a tough question or something? So as I sit here right now, we're attempting to be honest. Wait, what does that mean? When, when, it, was, when it was decided that we were going to do the, the weight loss, Aaron said, let's weigh in. And I said, no. So a week before the camera showed up, I weighed in 226. So a week before the filming on January 1st, you lost five pounds a week from just Going. I did a fast. So why did you want to lose weight in order to? I just didn't want to be on camera at damn near two hundred thirty pounds. The two twenty six was the most I've ever weighed. Yo, okay, so a week before the show started, a week before the weigh-in in the first episode, he came in. Five pounds heavier and then lost that five pounds in a week because he didn't want to be on camera at quote damn near 230 pounds and he did it via fasting Ooh, that's not good and it fully explains why we have that rebound happen on the first way in after he starts the journey in the show that sort of like flop way in on what we see is like the end of the first week for him it's week two week one was fasting so hardcore caloric restriction and then lord only knows what else i can't imagine that was it i bet he was doing some other stuff i bet he was doing some like hard cardio or whatever I, I i can't prove it that we don't have any information on that we have no data on it but we minimal we have Hard fasting enough that he could lose five pounds in a week before they even started. And then he comes in working out hard. And I'm sure now that he has all these people on the squad, like supposing they're supposed to help him on his journey, nutritionist, you know, being one of them. So he has proper meals. Obviously, his weight's going to fluctuate back up again. Because he's actually eating again. And metabolically speaking, there's been a little bit of... A eh, little bit of... Some fuckery there that kind of threw things off. This is interesting. By the way, not how any logical, reasonable, or well-seasoned uh, trainer would ever tell you to approach anything like this. Aggressive nutritional strategies like this are not the path to sustainable weight loss and long-term health, FYI. Damn, okay, so, bruv, okay, so we have, do I count this as one red flag or two red flags? So we have the first red flag that pops up when he puts that aggressive timeline on himself. Uh, and then we have the, we have another red flag that pops off because of this restrictive eating that he's decided to embark on. Uh, oh, damn. I, do I count? Is it two that he, like, that he fasted hardcore? You know what? I'm gonna, Okay, I'm going to put three up. The reason I'm going to put three up, it means I'm going to have to make some adjustments in episode three. Like I said, already recorded. Got to edit now. Don't worry. I'll fix it. If I don't, whatever. We'll catch up in episode four. Don't worry about it. I got you. Point is we have a couple things going on here. The first thing, the the very restrictive and inadvisable eating patterns that he engaged in in order to facilitate um, weight loss in the first place and then also to um, punish himself in, in the second case. And then the psychological uh, decision to punish oneself for not meeting the goal via food not a good sign not a good sign at all if that is something you are doing then that is it is time to start seeing somebody who specializes in uh, in disordered eating and talking to them and seeing if maybe there's there's something there i say there's a decent possibility you might want to start looking into that because you should not be associating punishment and reward with food it is a dark road to go down and it doesn't lead anywhere good 
okay, I got to see what else comes out of this. This is crazy so far. I would not have thought we would have got this kind of stuff coming from Will Smith, from William Smith. Men in Black, Wild Wild West, that man, bad boys. I really wouldn't have thought that would be the guy doing this. This is crazy. Okay, let, let's see what else we got here. Did he know at that point? Hey, hey Ron? No. I told him later. For Will, goals are everything. It's pretty clear that that came a lot from childhood, where Will really had the sense of, I've got to work, I've got to succeed, I've got to lose this much weight. He has to win completely to stay safe, to stay in control. One of the challenges, though, is control is always an illusion. And when we start getting into the illusion of control over food, it actually can get quite tricky. I'm not into fasting as a way of weight loss. I don't like it uh, at all. And I don't think it's a healthy way to go about it. It's not actually peanut butter. It's a kind of peanut butter. It's a kind uh, of peanut butter. butter. Almond butter. Almond butter. Almond butter. Almond butter. So it's yeah. almond butter, banana, and um, what's the cracker? Seed cracker. A seed cracker. We brought in Mona. She's a nutritionist, and also with Will's doctor, we're going to try to set up a sustainable diet that's going to be healthy, and he's going to have all the energy that he needs. So this is guacamole seed cracker and sprouts. We had to focus on this idea of nourishment. How's it going to feel to nourish your body with the right foods? So, so we're trying to find pre-workout options for you. So when we look down at his plate, we want to make sure that there is 60 to 70% of high quality plant-based foods. We also want to make sure that there is a high quality protein and good quality fat. Second sip got better, third sip. <laughs> yeah, this is horrible, so, okay. but. How do we make sure that you are replenishing, you know, in terms of your nutrition to lose the weight and get to where you want to be? Yeah, actually, today we put a monitoring system on him, so it'll measure uh, exactly how many calories that he's burning on a daily basis. Okay. So if we. Fitbits are notoriously unreliable for tracking caloric expenditure. The data is pretty clear on that one. A number of studies have basically looked at the Fitbit's ability to monitor caloric expenditure and been like, nah, the variance is crazy. So, monitoring system. Bit aggressive. You're talking up a Fitbit a lot, and I have a weird feeling that perhaps this is sponsored by Fitbit in some way, shape, or form. Um... But, you know, you got to pay the bill somehow. This show does not pay for itself. Hella people on squad. They're not working for free, I would bet. But I digress. Let's continue. We're looking to lose a pound a week. One pound yeah. roughly equates to around 3,500 calories. Right. So divided by seven, it's 500 calorie deficit a day, which is a minimal amount. Okay. See. My estimation is a great result, dude. You know, I'll take that. That's what I was thinking. I got carb depleted the other day and fell out of the, the workout. You know, the protein and the carbs and fats, and it's it's like a lesson. I try to figure out what to eat and when and all of that to burn the maximum fat, build the maximum muscle, but some of that sounds like horseshit to me. Now, the reason why may not be obvious to you, but hold up, I'll, I'll explain. He talks about how he got carb depleted. He got depleted and then he fell out of the workout and, you know, learning what to eat and when to eat it, blah, blah, blah. Cool for an average person. But you're Will Smith. More to the point, we just saw you have a meeting with a nutritionist. And that nutritionist was supposed to set you up with all of your meals, basically. That's what he was doing. He was testing meals. He was testing out the meal possibilities. There is no way she didn't set him up with an ironclad plan to get this done. I have this weird feeling, and I can't prove it, but a weird feeling that Will is not eating all the food he's supposed to be eating. And that's why he was carb depleted. And that's why he fell out the workout. Well, not carb depleted, but just 
depleted. We don't know what specific nutrient was off whack, but he was depleted and he fell out of the workout. And I have a feeling it's because the well-constructed food meal plan that he had set up for him wasn't being followed. That's my guess here. I could be wrong, but that's my guess. You don't have to learn anything, Will Smith. You don't have to learn anything. You are an actor and a musician. The nutritionist already knows and already did the work for you. You should be doing that. But I bet some of those sort of restrictive eating habits don't go down very easy and they follow him. And I think they follow him as a ghost, the fear and the shame from that weigh in that didn't go his way, making him want to constantly hit, 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 and hit better than before and better than before and just kind of constantly keep pushing the bar. And I think it's causing him to make some restrictive choices. But we'll see. I might be wrong, but we'll see. Still have energy. So we are outside of the Burj Khalifa. It's the tallest building on earth for our cardio. We're going to just walk the stairs all the way to the top. How many floors, AA, Ron? 160 floors. 160 floors. So we're going to try to scale 160 floors. I hope we haven't taken, <laughs> taken, taken on, on a, a bit, little bit too much. Bit, bit too much. <laughs> Quick side note, he could also not be... Like, he could be eating what he's supposed to be eating, but taking on way more physical exertion. And as a result, throwing the whole calculation off, which is why he is depleted. Another possibility. Didn't think of that one in the, in the moment, but thought I would just... I got reminded when he said, I'm going to climb the Burj Khalifa. I Cool. That sounds taxing. And that's what made me think of that. Anyway, let's keep going. For my entire career, I've been committed to a work ethic of uncompromising intensity. You show up and you lay another brick. Pissed off, lay another brick. Bad opening weekend, lay another brick. Album sales dropping, lay another brick. Marriage failing, lay another brick. Another note. This ideology of lay another brick is inherently flawed. Because if you're just laying another brick down, even when things are hard and something's not going your way, you're not acknowledging the fact that the one of the bricks you already laid wasn't laid perfectly. And if you don't fix that, either in the brick itself or the methodology that created the imperfectly laid brick, you're just going to carry that forward over and over and over and over again to every brick you lay until it causes the whole wall to crumble. But that's a whole other thing. Let's just, I digress. We'll, we'll, we'll continue on. So what did we learn? Um, um, we learned that even people who look like the most driven, focused individuals don't have it all together in such a way that would allow us to classify them as perfect. Will Smith, a man who many would before this have classified as the type of individual that you aspire to without any question, any reservations, has his own demons and his own challenges. Um, and it leads him to make decisions that may not necessarily be the most sustainable, the most healthy long-term, the most positive, um, which really, it's no surprise. Will Smith, after all, is still human. And honestly, I think that's probably the best part about this whole documentary series thus far. It really does help connect us with Will Smith, the human being, beyond the motivational quotes, beyond the persona, beyond the larger than life personalities we see in his various characters in the movie and movies and on TV. Um, that's, that's important. We need to be reminded that all of us are humans and we make very human mistakes. So, yeah, I mean, I guess good takeaway here. Whatever methodologies you use to pursue your weight loss or fitness goals, make sure they're sustainable and healthy long-term. Aggressive moves like 
you know, hyper long fasts and hard, hard caloric restrictions and uh, that sort of thing are just, they're not the answer, not a long term. They will cost you. Like the psychologist said, maybe you succeed, but at what cost? And if the cost is your long term health, you need to really ask yourself, why are you taking that path in the first place? Maybe it's time to reinvestigate why the other, you know, less aggressive, more sustainable paths weren't working or what was not missing from them initially. Um, well, yeah, that does it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, look forward and stay tuned for episode three, for which, like I already said, already recorded, already done in the can. So it'll be coming at you pretty soon. Uh, likely the week after this one is released, uh, it'll be I'll be releasing the Will Smith Best Shape of My Life um, commentaries every week on my Tuesday usual release schedule. Uh, and so, yeah, look forward to it. I look forward to doing them. I'm really enjoying doing this series. So, you know, if you like it, if there's anything you see you want to, you want me to do, want me to look at, if there's something you think I should tackle after this, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, of course, like this video and subscribe to the channel so you can become a star in the galaxy. And of course, stay shining because the galaxy can only be a bright and beautiful place if we all shine together. Peace.